New samples in the post this morning. Exciting things. <laughs> Good morning. Um, so this morning in the post, I've got some cracking samples. So we're going to have a look at them. Um, today, I've got uh, Moth from Zoologist, which I'm going to be looking at. Zoologist, if you're unaware, is a kind of concept uh, house. Um, very kind of like, I think, independent um, perfume house. And they their concept is essentially animals and the kind of habitats that they live in. And uh, another one that I got is uh, Dragonfly, which is another one I'm going to be reviewing um, and sort of having a look at. I haven't smelled either of these. They're just, I, I decided I wanted to pick up a new perfume. Um, and these are two that I thought I'd try from the Zoologist label that I thought kind of sounded up my alley, I guess. Moth, it's supposedly the life of a moth. And notes in it are, top notes are cinnamon, cloves, cumin, lemon, nutmeg, pepper, saffron. In the heart is heliotrope, iris, jasmine, lily of the valley, mimosa and rose. And in the base you've got ambergris, gaiac wood, honey, musk, nagamotha, oud, patchouli, smoke and vetiver. That's a lot going on there, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to wear it today um, and I'm going to sort of uh, keep you updated on what I think of it and I'll come back later and give you a bit like my Sunday sample videos except from it's not Sunday and I actually bought this and knew what I was getting um, so that's the only difference really let's give it a bosh well if this works whoa whoa okay <laughs> So that's, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Smoky. Funky. Funky, funky scent. Okay. Okay. It's starting to calm down now. It's starting to become bearable. So it's, uh, straight off the bat, it's kind of woody. I mean, you're really getting a lot of the kind of the, the pepper and the saffron for me. And, um, there's a little bit of the jasmine in there, uh, like, like the floral side of things. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, I, I would say, um, I'm getting really big blasts of, of the cumin, the nutmeg, um, sorry, the cumin, the pepper and the saffron. With a fair old whack of smoke. It's got that kind of diesel -y kind of smell to it, to me. So that, that that's a kind of, uh, reminds me of gaiac wood usually. Um, it could be viewed, um, I don't know. It's got that kind of slight medicinal edge to it in there. So I would, I would assume that's the oud. And it could be the, the saffron would be kind of perhaps helping that along. Complicated, very complicated, very deep, very rich, very dark, hugely dark. I mean, I'm glad it's not that sunny today. It's kind of grey skies, overcast. It, I think this will work for today's weather. But Christ, it's dark. It's, um, I like it. I didn't like it, I'll be honest. When I first sprayed it, there was this quite, uh, I don't know, it smelled a bit mothball-y, which is, you know, I know it's moth, but I don't think they meant mothballs, but it smelled a bit like, of like musty old, um, kind of cupboards but not in a good way because I mean I like the idea of musty old cupboards but this wasn't in a good way but after about 10 seconds or so it dropped all that and it started to kind of uh, flourish I guess and sort of come into its own a little bit more there's a lot going on very very unique I'll give it that um, but yeah an interesting scent and I, I'm going to go and wear that and then try and get a bit more out of it and hopefully give you a bit more of a uh, informed impression really because at the moment I feel a little bit useless this is um yeah it's an interesting scent I think I'll give you that I'll give it that all right so I'll, I'll kind of oh that's beautiful actually so now some of those other spices are coming out a little bit more there's a little bit of hint of sweetness from a cinnamon in there now well yeah yeah so I'm gonna I, I'll, I'll wear this for the rest of the day and I'll, I'll keep you guys updated and, and let you know what I think cheers so 
I'm about 10 minutes in now, only about 10 minutes past, um, you know, when I first sprayed it in there. And I'm just sort of getting ready for work, really. And uh, this has very quickly become very beautiful. I'm getting just um, really, really a lot of honey, um, sort of smoky honey and some of that nutmegs come out um, to kind of sweeten things a little bit and give it a kind of nice spicy edge. You've got like underneath it, everything is, is this really warm wood. Uh, there is a slight medicinal edge to everything from the oud, I, I assume. Um, and the, some of those kind of mids, the, those are kind of florals in the mids are coming out uh, to kind of just give it this, a, a, a very kind of almost sort of jammy uh, sweetness in the middle. Uh, but really for me, the, the key notes right now are like a smoky honey with nutmeg. And it's it's really getting quite stunning, actually. It's feeling, it's still feeling very dark, but it's it's not anywhere near as overwhelming as that, that, that kind of initial blast where it was just like, whoa, okay, there's a lot going on here. I feel like the main player right now, um, so about 10, 20 minutes in, it is this kind of smoky honey and nutmeg. Um, and it's really quite nice, yeah, let's say. That I, and it's really still really complicated. It's still really deep. I think this is gonna take more than one wearing to even get anywhere near like understanding what's going on. Uh, say, I, okay, I can say I've got that smoky warm honey, um, which is quite an easy one. Um, but underneath that, there is so much going on. There's this warm wood, uh, but it, it feels like there's more to it than that as well. And uh, the, the, the florals in the middle that are kind of giving it that jammy sweetness, um, almost like a gummy bear kind of feeling. Um, there's a lot going on there. There's an awful lot going on there. And it's spices on the top. So uh, cinnamon stands out for me um, and nutmeg stands out for me um, with that honey. Um, but I, I also feel like it's more complicated than that as well. And of course, it's everything seems to be kind of smothered by this uh, a, a very dusty smoke. Very dusty, um, definitely. And it, it, yeah, like a dusty kind of smokiness. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll keep wearing it and we'll see where it, we'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm excited. So just a quick kind of update because I'm right by the main road here. There's nowhere really to chill out um, in the middle of the city. But uh, so really, it's really calmed down now. And uh, the honey's a big part of it um, still. Like really thick, um, sweet, sticky honey. Um, and otherwise, um, you know, it's become quite wearable now. It's actually like really wearable, I feel. Um, I looked up Nagamorta, funny enough, and now a lot of it makes sense. Um, it's actually Cipriol. Um, I have uh, a Cipriol oil at home, so I know pretty well what that smells like. Um, and it's basically like a really dirty, earthy, dark scent. It smells a little bit like shit, to be honest. But in this, it's... Um, it's fine but it's but that's where a lot of that dark earthiness is coming from i think um but yeah otherwise it's become a lot lot more wearable than it was at first and a lot more wearable than i was expecting um and i, I just think it's really nice actually um at this point it's not offensive um it's it's become quite beautiful it said the honeys uh did go in danger of kind of tipping over the edge of something that was just a little bit too sweet and sickly but it kind of managed to pull itself back and um, restrain itself and just was a really nice thick sticky honey I guess I'll probably do my last update like when I get home now so it's been a few hours see you later so I'm finally home it's been a long day uh, we've got Zorgis moth what's the crack I think it's gonna take definitely like more than one wear to really get to know this fragrance the dry down is much easier to kind of get to grips with than the opening that opening is just like really big really loud quite screechy to an extent um and, it, and it's just this huge spicy kind of cacophony of an explosion in your face of yeah just complicated spices quite deep but the dry down's much simpler um and you know it's quite actually you know there's there's a lot going on and it's still quite i think um quite deep fragrance 
but the the kind of main players of the dry down and and of the kind of heart of the fragrance there's actually not too bad to kind of get to grips with like i say so I say, I say it opens with that big huge spice um and then quite quickly the honey starts coming out and it's very smoky very like rich sticky honey there was a point that i kind of brought up where i said that it, it kind of teetered on that edge of of getting a little bit sickly for about 10 minutes and i did kind of feel like this is going the, a little bit too far the wrong way that honey is getting a little bit too sickly a bit too sticky getting a little bit cloy um but but then um it, it kind of dialed itself in and it was okay so it kind of rescued itself from the edge um and then the honey just kind of stuck around as this really resinous thick sticky honey very like sort of caramelized um beautiful kind of note actually beautiful accord um done really well alongside that honey um which it, you know it's, it's incredibly dark heart really this fragrance i mean right from the start it's dark but a lot along with that honey you, you you could sort of say you get this kind of powdery vibe but i i wouldn't really like i associate kind of powdery with clean and this is much dirtier and darker than that. So I would kind of be inclined to say like dusty. It felt kind of dusty with along with that smoke, sort of almost like ashy, dusty, smoky kind of feel to it. Um, and it definitely had like a kind of uh, dirty undertone to everything. And I'm pretty sure, like I say, that came from the Nagamortha, which is um, Cypriot oil. Um, I'm pretty sure it came from that, which is, say, like a real kind of earthy, dark, quite dirty, little bit kind of animalic, fecal um, kind of vibe to it. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty sure it came from that. The, the one thing that this fragrance has got, which I quite didn't like at first i felt it was a bit screechy and a bit scratchy but then i it, in the dry down and, and as it, it moved away from, after about the first couple of minutes basically or i'd say after about the first five to ten minutes which is where it's really this big huge opening um but you get this heliotrope and it and it and it's right from the start and it runs through the whole life of the fragrance even now it's still there um and i'm like 12 hours in at this point like heliotrope is um a kind of quite light uh candy almond kind of vibe and that's what this is, has it's, it's quite in this fragrance it feels quite sharp almost because the fragrance is so dark and dense and resinous um that, that they have this kind of light heliotrope kind of floral that just kind of strikes straight through the middle and it just cuts straight through the middle of everything and that's a really interesting kind of juxtaposition um and i, I, I like that um, and it, it probably also saves it from just being like too heavy and gothic and um, without it I think perhaps you know it needed something to, to do this job and I think the heliotrope does it really well crazily about four hours in I got this like lemon vibe sort of coming out um like, like it was brief it only lasted for about half an hour but there was a distinct kind of lemon that came out about four hours in I I, I mean it, it's sort of just a small thing that I kind of noted but because it wasn't huge in the fragrance and it went later but it just was surprised me that a fragrance four hours in suddenly a citrus just burst out of nowhere um it was interesting it was really interesting um after that really it sort of continues to develop where that honey sort of gets darker and dirtier and the florals come out but they're quite gothic and um and that's about it. I would never say it's like a, a really pungent floral, though. Um, I would say, to sum it up, I would say it's like kind of dusty, ashy, smoky, honeyed floral. Um, but the florals are, like I say, like they're quite sort of candied. Um, and I really liked it. I, I thought it was really good. Um, so who do I think it's for? Unisex, 100% unisex. Um, absolutely no problem. Anyone could wear this, it'd be fine um when you would wear it i would definitely say it, i wore it in the daytime but i would definitely say it's more of an evening scent it worked in the day it was fine but I, it definitely lends itself more to an evening kind of scent um darker scent it's quite dark it's quite dirty it's quite gothic but it's also got quite a, a kind of um sexy kind of vibe to it as well 
um, with that kind of dark dirtiness. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's more of an evening thing, probably um, in terms of the weather. Uh, probably the colder weather, um, dank weather. Um, but then today, it's you know, it's it's the middle of the spring, coming up, you know, moving into summer almost, and you know, it was overcast. English weather is okay because it never really gets blisteringly hot. I think it was about 15 degrees and it worked really well. So, you know, probably wouldn't want to wear it in the middle of the summer in the daytime. I think it would destroy you, your soul and everyone around you would just sort of melt into a gelatinous mess on the floor if you wore this in the day. So, you know, I suppose that ultimate kind of question, you know, the proof in the pudding, am I going to buy it? Um, it's a difficult one. I, I really liked it. Um, and it definitely will be shortlisted. Uh, but I, I want to try Dragonfly first. Um, and I've got a couple from Beaufort coming this week as well that I want to try. Um, Fathom and Tonair. It definitely, I enjoyed it. And if, you know, it, it's set a high bar, let's put it that way, for Dragonfly. If, if Dragonfly... And I mean, I might end up buying them both, but I, I would prefer to only buy one. Um, you know, I generally tend to be quite strict on myself in terms of what I'm buying from retail so it but it's set a high bar it's really good the one thing that turns me off of buying it is I've got a fragrance that's quite similar um and I would say that would be um Lord Nonero by uh Tiziani Terenzi um I, do, I don't think it smells bang similar but they they're, they're in a very similar ballpark in that kind of dusty ashy smoky kind of woody resinous thing the pair do have some crossovers at points um but they're, they're different enough but this kind of fragrance i'm not sure you really need that many of them um so that's the one thing that kind of goes against it but i really the honey sets it way apart from the uh, tiziani terenzi that they, they, they kind of you know that that kind of makes it different enough um for me and the honey's really well done so i i do think it's worth having both of them um but it's just for my money you know i might come back to this perhaps um for that reason um but you say it's i've it's got it's definitely good and i probably would buy it um but it, say it's set a high bar for the other samples that i'm going to be trying this week uh so yeah a really really good fragrance so that's pretty much zoologist moth um beautiful fragrance heavy dark resonant gothic if you like all the sound of that I recommend it highly. It's an interesting fragrance. It's fairly, yeah, it's got a story to tell and it's, um, you can really kind of get in there. And I say, I, I've worn it once and it was, yeah, I've been all day with it, but I wouldn't pretend to know it. I, I'm definitely going to have to come back to this and wear it like a couple of times to really get to feel. And if you like the idea of that, go for it. I think it's a fantastic fragrance. So cheers. Thanks.